Hey, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. This will be my top 10 stocks as we head into Tuesday, September 6th. Friendly reminder, the markets are closed on September 5th for Labor Day. This will be a technical analysis breakdown, so if you are somebody that uses charts within your trading, or maybe you're just interested in learning more about charts and how they can be used to help make good decisions as a trader, this will be a video for you. Real quick, a couple of clarification points before I get started. First one, this price you see over here will be moving around as I talk. And then the candlestick right there will also be moving around. That is because the market is still open for several minutes. But I like to do these videos when the market is still open because sometimes we can capture some really interesting late day price movement. And the next, I'll be using the 30 minute time frame, meaning each one of these candlesticks here represents 30 minutes worth of time. So stock number one here, ticker symbol NBEV. And very, very dynamic move today. You can see volume really came pouring in this morning and did drop off through the rest of the day. But you know, generally speaking from an overall sense, good solid volume on the day, which brings about a more than valid question and something that you know is, is more than, like I said, valid to consider moving forward. And that is, hey, is this the start of something bigger? Volume came pouring in, is there gonna be more to it? Or is this just a one day wonder? And in my mind, the key level to watch from a support standpoint and a level that I would definitely consider very, very important is right down there at 15 cents. Now, why is 15 cents important? And I'm not saying this is what's gonna happen, but just for explanation's sake, let's say the price comes down to that area and then breaks down through there. At that point, what would that be doing to the price? That would quite literally be putting the price right back inside of that area where it just was. And I mean, not to insult your intelligence, but price movements that go back to where they were, not exactly a sign of genuine power. But if the price can manage to stay above this area and then eventually head back up, at that point, you would still have a set of lows there you'd have lows down there. And if you envision those as stair steps, you'd still have stair steps progressing in the upwards direction. So that's why to me, 15 cents, very, very important level and revealing in the sense of, is this thing making progress or is the price just going back to where it was? In terms of levels of resistance here going into next week, first key level gonna be that purple line there, 50 period moving average. And the next level after that, uh, the pink line up there, that 200 period moving average, which you can see back here, does have a track record of acting as resistance. But all in all, like I said, gotta give credit where credit's due. Good solid volume, not just a question of can this move continue next week, we'll see what happens. Next one, ticker symbol PXMD. Very, very nice move today. And what I like about this one is the fact that, in my mind, there's a very well-defined level out up here as resistance at $6.15. So let me be very clear, when I draw that line up here, by no means am I trying to apply that, you know, drawing that line there is some sort of great discovery or anything on my end, not at all. In fact, a lot of people have drawn that line. And I say all that because when a lot of people are watching the same level and wondering the same thing, call it a self-filling prophecy, call it whatever you want, it can certainly produce some very dynamic movement. So no, no such thing as a guarantee, but is it plausible? Is it valid to think that if the price can consolidate out, come up there and then get a break up through that line, that that break in and of itself could create additional upwards buying pressure because people are buying, well, just because it's a breakout, that's absolutely not a guaranteed outcome, but a plausible outcome to think through. So if you like to play breakouts in 615, a very well-defined level there, if this thing does continue to pull back, then the key level for you, those of you that like to play pullbacks, right down there around $4.50. So keep an eye on that. But in my opinion, at least the most interesting dynamic going into next week is all about that 615 mark and whether or not the price can get the break of it or not. Next one here, AVCT. And this will mean a bit more to those of you that watched your video from Thursday. But in that video, I talked all about the level here, that pink line, which represents the 200 period moving average. And I talked about how the price had found some support and you can see that support carried into this morning and then once again carried into this afternoon. So the premise continues to hold that, hey, you know what, maybe just maybe the bottom is finally forming here. Now remember the idea, the philosophy of a watch list is to find unique, to find interesting situations and not randomly rush out and buy anything, but to watch it and to see how the price behaves and see if it ultimately does perform in a way that fits your personal risk tolerance and personal strategy. So just because it's at that line, I'm not necessarily saying to buy, but I am saying that it makes sense. It's a, you know, a, a rational thought process to say, okay, is this some sort of double bottom pattern that's gonna occur that ultimately creates this thing to get a bounce to the upside? It might not be. Maybe this thing continues to fall apart, but to, to be fair, that is a two-sided coin because maybe it is and this thing does continue to bounce. So as of right now, uh, you know, that thesis holds that as of now, uh, that 200 period moving average is behaving as support. So let's see if this continues the next week and then potentially does indeed create a bounce. Next one here, AHI. And like the other one that I talked about, very, very well-defined breakout point right here at $1.80. 
So once again, by no means am I trying to impress anybody, imply that the, that's a great discovery. A lot of people have noticed a dollar eighty, so I'm not going to sit here and repeat myself. You get the general idea. So is it a guaranteed outcome? No, but is it plausible to think that the price comes up to that level and then gets the break up through it? That this break in and of itself could create additional buying pressure? That is certainly a valid thought process to have from a breakout standpoint in terms of levels of support. So for those of you that like to play those pullbacks, interesting level from a pullback standpoint right there around $1.33. But like I said in the previous one, in my opinion, the most interesting dynamic is whether or not the price can get the break up through that $1.80 mark. So let's see what happens with it next week. Next one, AMC. Very nice move today. Started off today, uh, you know, rough actually. Uh, the first 30 minutes was actually relatively rough. Got the candles confused there, but that was the first 30 minutes, that red candle. But then the second 30 minutes is where that big green candle really showed up. And then this pullback here was a little, uh-oh, you know, kind of, is this thing going to roll back over? But got her answer, no, it did not roll over. It put in a low right there when you compare to the previous low right there. And then envision those are stair steps. You got some stair steps progress in the upward direction. Now, yes, there's still a lot more work that needs to be done, but higher lows is always a good thing, and that's what happened here. And I think the main level that most people will be watching so again, I guess we can use that idea of a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's going to be this area right up here around $9.15. So nine fifteen is going to be that key breakout level. And then from a support standpoint, in my mind, let's keep an eye on that tread line right there. And as long as the price stays above that line, let me change that to green to represent more so a bullish dynamic. But as long as the price stays above that tread line, that by definition implies that the price is trending upwards, which is exactly what you want to see from a bullish standpoint. Uh, so in some senses, I suppose a, a bit of an ascending triangle here starting to form. So let's see how it all goes next week. Real quick, I wanted to take a uh, quick break and personally invite you to get signed up for this free live online training that I'm offering next week. So if you've been enjoying what you've seen and you want to learn more about this tool, how it can and should be used to help make good decisions as a trader, then certainly get signed up for the free training next week. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link down in the description box. If you're watching at my site, there's an area right there on the webpage you can click to get signed up. So like I said, if you've been enjoying what you've seen and you want to learn more, then certainly get signed up for the free training. Next one, D-R-U-G, and a couple different ways you could play this, either from a breakout or, or pullback standpoint. So the first is going to be the breakout standpoint, and as I've said, we'll call this our self-fulfilling prophecy tread line. Because, I mean, check it out. I assure you, a bunch of people have drawn that tread line right there. I mean, you can see just three times now it's done a fantastic job of forecasting problem points. So, again, guarantees, no, but is it plausible to think that if the price does get up there and breaks through that, whoops, try that again. That if it can break up through that tread line, that could create some good, solid upside buying pressure. That is a completely plausible potential outcome. And then as far as pullbacks are concerned, for those of you that like to play pullbacks and in particular gap closes, then right down there around the $1.65 mark could be a very interesting potential turnaround point as it closes the gap and potentially find support. But no guarantees, so it's not like it's for sure going to find support. Uh, but from a risk-reward standpoint, if you do get the bounce, then relative to what was being risked, uh, you could be looking at a nice little trade plan there. But overall, uh, you know, definitely some two, uh, two very well-defined levels. Next one, TSLA Tesla. And started off today very, very solid. I mean, you got to like the fact that it had the big gap up. But that opening 30 minutes ultimately turned out to just be a, a big red candle. And then the price essentially sunk downwards from that point. So now the price is starting to get within striking distance of a couple of these other key levels. Uh, the main key level being right down here at the $266 level. Uh, you know, and, and again, that's just the previous low. So nothing complicated there. But the reason why that's unique and interesting is you got a couple of schools of thought. Both are valid. One school of thought is, okay, if the price comes down here, do we get a double bottom where the price bounces? Again, totally valid. Another school of thought is going to be, well, if the price comes down here and then just collapses, is that going to create additional downside uh, downside selling pressure? Again, a completely valid school of thought. But that's why risk management is so important because somebody's going to be right, somebody's going to be wrong in that scenario. But the, the key common denominator there is that that green line is going to be a level that lots of people are watching. So definitely keep a close eye on it. If the price does try to bounce to the upside, key level resistance I'll be keeping an eye on as somebody that watches Tesla uh, on a daily basis is going to be that 50 period moving average, uh, that purple line, which puts the price right up there around the 274-ish mark. But overall, those are definitely going to be the main levels that I'll be watching. Next one, SQQQ, and this is an ETF that allows you to make money if you think that the NASDAQ is going to drop. So if you believe that the entire NASDAQ market is going to drop, this one will actually allow you to make money on it. And talk about an insane recovery today. Started off rough with the, mar or with the price down here, and then this afternoon just roared to the upside. But what makes this extra special is that in roaring to the upside, it's still sitting right around an area that is you know, a key level of resistance, but one that is yet yet been broken. So 
Let's get this in play here. And you can see right up here at, what is that? The $48 mark. Again, let me change that to red for resistance. But this is right where the price found some resistance before. So going back, you can see right there was a problem point. And then wouldn't you know it, again, a problem point during the final 30 minutes. So self-fulfilling prophecy, I assure you, everybody and their brother's uncle is going to be watching $48 on this one and wondering if the price breaks, what's going to happen. So guarantees, say it with me, no, but plausible outcome, yes. Completely plausible to think that if the price gets up to 48 and then gets the break up through it, that that break could very well create additional buying pressure. So certainly keep an eye on that, a very, very well-defined level. Next one, Amazon, A-M-Z-N. And like a lot of the stocks did pull back this afternoon, but two key levels that really stand out to me. First one from the support standpoint, gonna be right down here at, uh, let's see, what is that? Uh, the 126 mark, you can see 126 behaved as a support back here. And then during the last 30 minutes, you can see it got relatively close to 130 or uh, 126, excuse me. Uh, so from the shorts perspective, if the price does get down there and pushes down through it, more than valid, not guaranteed, as I've said, and we'll probably say 2 million more times, but very valid to think that the price could then head down to right around that 123.75 mark, which then brings it up to the, the topic of Tesla. And what are you going to have down there? Is it going to be some sort of double bottom or is it going to be a, a, a continued breakdown? Both of those are valid schools of thought. And then in terms of areas of resistance, main level to watch, going to be right up there at that trend line, which puts the price right up around the 130. 50-ish uh, mark, give or take. But in, in my opinion right now, the most relevant level is what's going to happen with these areas of support, especially that level right there at 126. Next one, NVIDIA has just absolutely been beat down, which makes this very, very interesting. Let's get our self fulfilling prophecy line in place because, again, a lot of people have drawn that trend line. And NVIDIA is such a popular stock. It's been beaten down so much. So you got to think that there's a bunch of people just drooling out there looking for any reason to buy it all, thinking, Look at all this, you know, this thing has been beat down. Surely this thing's gonna get some sort of bounce. And in my mind, it's gonna be that tread line that a lot of people are watching. Again, on some situations, I wouldn't really put too much, uh, you know, bullishness into it uh, under these circumstances. But given it's NVIDIA, given how popular of a stock it is, once more, final time, not a guarantee, but in my mind, very plausible to think that the price can recover up to that area and get the breakup through it, that that could create a good solid amount of upwards buying pressure because again, for the simple reason of it's such a popular stock. If it doesn't though, and this thing just keeps on bleeding, then the level that all sorts of people are gonna be watching right down there at the 132.50 mark, which is essentially where the price leveled off back here. Whoops. Right around that area. You can tell I'm on my tablet and not my normal setup here. But anyways, point being, that's definitely gonna be a, a very watch level of support moving forward. So in some senses, you could also call this, which is completely valid, uh, just one big bear pennant pattern. You have the resistance, you have the support, you have the big downwards move right there. Now, just because it's bearish does not mean it's for sure gonna go down, uh, but just another way to look at it. But overall, like I said, that tread line up there is what definitely is most intriguing to me. So that wraps up the top 10. Again, if you like what you saw here and you wanna learn more about this tool, then next week, offering the class, Thursday, September 8th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So I hope to see you there. As far as these top 10 videos are concerned, if you enjoy this format, do a couple things for me. Hit that like button and leave a comment below. Tell me what you traded today. Tell me what you're watching next week or drop me any sort of request for uh, charts that you'd like me to do uh, next week and I will definitely consider that. So again, get signed up for that free training. Hit the like button, leave a comment down below. Everybody, thanks for watching. Take care and have a fantastic Labor Day weekend.